Hello, great hearts. Hello. My heart is filled with irrepressible joy as I stand before you all this evening. My name is Toyin Atalakbe. I serve as the Dean of Academics at my new family, Archway Lincoln, now. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, and that is where I spent the first 24 years of my life. My father was a diplomat, and my mom was an elementary school teacher. I would classify my family as a middle-class family, but it was still very difficult for my parents to pay my tuition at the private primary school that offered a classical liberal arts education. This notwithstanding, they sacrificed virtually everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. To enable me attend that particular private school, I am eternally grateful to them for the choices they made regarding my education because it gave me the foundation I needed to be successful. Apart from attending the right school, my parents instilled in me a lifelong passion for the pursuit of excellence by helping me to form the right habits. They created an environment with structure that enabled me to do and be so much. Uppermost in their minds was the help, uppermost, uppermost in their minds was to help their six children live a morally upright life. Today, I will share with you some of my favorite quotes from life's lessons that my parents instilled in me. My dad, he would say, a good name is better than silver or gold. Protect your integrity, child, by doing the right thing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> My mom will say, keep your head up high, look up, smile all the time. That's how you make friends. My dad, in his very deep husky voice, would say, Come on, child. In life, challenges will come. But be brave. I do not know of any storm that lasted forever. My dad again, he would tell me, Never go weary. When someone calls, you should answer, regardless of how many times they call you. Answer, child. <laughs> and this was one of my favorite. When my parents would ask us a question, and this is my mom now, even before she gives you an opportunity to respond, she will say, when you tell the truth, you put the devil to shame. And my dad will end by saying, and give the angels an opportunity to rejoice too. <laughs> These were the life lessons that shaped my upbringing. And so when I came to work for Great Hearts six years ago, my personal values aligned well with Great Hearts organizational values. And so even now that I have two kids, I try to bring them up the way I was brought up by inculcating in them these values that my parents inculcated in me. But guess what? You all know how hard it is to raise children in this generation. So for that, I must give a shout out to all our wonderful teachers that teach our students every day. Teach them intellectual and moral virtue. My six-year-old came home one day and she said, you know what, mom, in school today, Miss Sipe said that I should not only be a good citizen of my school and of my country, I have to be a good citizen of my home. So I have decided to start washing the dishes. <laughs> I said to myself, 
Long leave great hearts. <laughs> the constant reminders from my parents help shape my personal values. What I have realized over the years is that regardless of your geographical location or your cultural background, there is truth, beauty, and goodness in teaching virtues, both intellectual and moral virtues. Our primary purpose as educators is to continue to create an environment where we can nurture a love of moral and intellectual virtue. Plato attests to this notion when he said the goal of education then is to create the right environment. And I know that at Great Hearts, this is the environment that we create for our children. This is what makes us different from the school down the road. That environment we create every day, where teachers are serving and modeling virtues every day. I know that in creating this environment, there are voices behind the curtains telling you it's not possible. Do not, and I repeat, dear colleagues, do not be drawn into the mentality of impossibilities. Instead, tell those voices of gloom that they should relax. It is possible. Schools like Great Hearts, we are doing something about raising the next generation right from the scratch. And when I say right from the scratch, I mean in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, all the way up to 12th grade. How many of you agree with me? The vision that I see for Great Hearts 15, 20 years from now is that vision where you look at the Senate, you look at the House of Rep, you look at the presidency, and there will be alumnus of Great Park School. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing with me. Our students will find the cure for cancer. I feel strongly in my mind. They will take a trip to anywhere in space that exists that no one has ever been to. What I must remind you of, those voices, those pessimists will sit down and say that they are a hopeless generation. Patrick Henry said, hope becomes an illusion when we do not act. They are not a hopeless generation. Tell them that we are building an environment that is indescribably positive, nurturing and empowering for our future leaders. Tell them we are life changers, raising a whole new generation of leaders that are historically informed, language proficient, ideologically sound, and virtue driven. Lastly, tell them to stop worrying Tell them to stop being pessimists. Tell them to join the revolution. It doesn't matter as what, a nurse, ESS specialist, an assistant teacher, a board of director, a headmaster, a teacher, a parent, just tell them to join the revolution. Thank you.